You know, one thing, you, you have four girls and I have three girls. I always mention this when you and I are together because it's sort of an extraordinary thing, seven girls among us. But also extraordinary is that we hardly get any sleep. So stick around for this. Uh, it's a common complaint how you and your baby can both sleep like babies. Stay with us. You know, my next guest has the number one complaint of new parents, lack of sleep. No surprise there. Half of parents say they get less than six hours of sleep every night. Not enough. And what we all know that if a baby's not sleeping, chances are you're not either. Dr. Harvey Kerf is a pediatrician, has 30 years' experience, and his latest book is The Happiest Baby Guide to Great Sleep. It goes on sale this Tuesday, and he joins me now from Los Angeles. Welcome to the show, Dr. Kerf. Thank you, Dr. Gupta. Good to meet you. You too. You're, you're known for, for coaching babies to sleep with what you, you, you say the five S's. That's your method, which includes swaddling, uh, placing the baby on a side or stomach, but not while they're sleeping, swinging, sucking, right. and also using shushing sounds. Um, I'm most intrigued by the, by the sound component of this. The white noise, I think, is the way you describe it. W why is that so important, Dr. Kerb? Well, inside the womb, the sound babies hear is louder than a vacuum cleaner 24-7. And that sound and all of those S's that you talked about actually turn on a calming reflex. It's like uh, a relative off switch for crying and on switch for sleep that all babies are born with. It, you know, not all white noise is the same. And I, and I actually have a prop here I want to show, show people. Um, this is a little bit what it looks like here. And uh, you can hear that probably plenty loud. There's, there's different settings on here that's surf uh, but you also have um, rain if you can hear that um, right brook there's even one that sort of simulates the sound in the womb a little heartbeat you can hear that is, is this is this what you're talking about is this right stuff so to speak that's the kind of white noise but actually all of those sounds need to be more rumbly when you think about what a baby hears in the womb they're in water and water filters out high pitch so they don't hear so much a shh as much as they hear a That's more low pitch. And when you think about calming a baby, when you calm, when they're crying, you go shh. But as they calm, you go shh, shh. You naturally lower your That's pitch. That's interesting. I, yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. I have, I have three young children, as you may know, and I, you just described that perfectly. But my children are about to be seven, five, and three. Your new book also helps older children get to sleep. Uh, it's, it, you know, my youngest child, first of all, is having the, the most difficulty. Uh, w what do you tell a child mm -hmm. to become a toddler uh, who doesn't like to go to bed? Well, you know, for one thing, you're, you're not alone. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, Baby Center and I just did a survey of over a thousand moms, and we found a third of the families were struggling with their kids' sleep over a year of age with defiance at bedtime, like you're saying, or waking up in the middle of the night. And so, of course, um, you can use white noise for those kids as well. That helps them not wake up or not bother you in the middle of the night. They'll sleep through better. Mm -hmm. But I like to start bedtime, believe it or not, after breakfast. Think about it that way, that, that you want to encourage them to go out and get exercise and fresh air and, of course, eat well and avoid caffeinated foods, that, things like um, iced tea and cola and even chocolate can disturb a child's sleep. And then at nighttime, Start some white noise in the background about an hour before bedtime and start to dim the lights a little bit. That gives a cue to the brain to start releasing melatonin, which, as you know, is the, the brain's natural sleep hormone. The hormone of darkness, as it's called, melatonin. Dr. Harvey Karp, a real pleasure. Absolutely. I've been wanting to speak to you for some hey, time. Hey, thank you. Uh, and I hope a lot, of a lot of people are going to get a lot out of this. I appreciate your time. Thanks. I look forward to the next time. Yeah, and you, you may not know this at home, but, but lack of sleep for parents is actually also linked to higher rates of shaken baby syndrome. It's a terrible consequence, also linked to child abuse.